Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Our theme uh, for the last few weeks and going forward for a while is focused. And I don't know if you got a chance to read the, the service introduction on the inside of the bulletin or not, but we call worship service, which raises the question as to who's serving who. In answering that question, it's easy to focus on what we do in worship. I set aside time each week to worship my Lord. I'm singing praises to God. I bring Him my offering. Clearly, I am serving Him. True enough. However, as God speaks to us, as He speaks to us in His Word, clarifying what He has for a message for us, He delivers a special gift to us. He serves us with His Holy Word, and He guides us and grows us and feeds us with His Holy Supper. And so there's both happening, and that's what we're going to focus on today in our message. We're also going to partake of the Lord's Supper today, so we welcome those who are members of Cross the Glory to come forward, or if you're a member of one of our sister churches, you're welcome to come forward too. You see the chairs are still set up a little bit differently, and that'll change again next week because we're going to have to rearrange a few things. But uh, So for communion today, uh, the ushers will be uh, ushering up the outside sections first for communion, and then they'll come to the front here and work their way back for the middle sections, okay? And you notice the uh, little trays are right up here a little more, so please go back down these side, the, the center or the side aisles over here because there's not enough room by the band tonight or today, okay? All right, those instructions are there. Oh, and if you could fill out the little card in your seat back, that would be helpful too. Uh, they'll collect those at offering time. So our scripture and song with the Lord's Supper service, it's uh, projected for you on the screen or in the service folder. If you would please rise, we'll begin with our gathering right on the Word of God. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, how I love your law. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. How sweet are your words to my taste. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yet so often we have despised God's word and failed to gladly hear and learn it. For this and all our sins we bow before God and humbly ask his forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. In the rain. 
God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that by believing you may have life in his name. The scripture testify about Jesus, who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross for all of your sins, and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Speak, O Lord, and renew our minds. Help us grasp the heights of your plans for us. Truths unchanged. From the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity. And by grace will stand on your promises. And by faith will walk as you walk with us. Speak, O oh Lord, till your church is built. We pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and bring forth fruits in faith, hope, and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We turn to God's Word, and we first of all look at the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 to 14. With his gracious visit and his gracious words, the Lord serves Sarah with exactly what she needs, a strengthened faith. We read, The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was see sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought that you may wa all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant." Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried in the, into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seas of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? they asked. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, 
Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. This is our first lesson. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 119b. It will speak this psalm responsibly by the half verse. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Give me understanding and I will keep your law. Direct me in the path of your commands. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Fulfill your promise to your servant. How I long for your precepts. We'll have the kids come up now. All right, I guess it's you three. Good to see you. So have you ever talk to your parents and they're doing this <laughs> yeah yeah and you're talking to them do you do you like it when you're talking to them and they're doing this why not they're not hearing you they're distracted by this yeah i'll tell you a secret Mrs. Ehlers doesn't like it when I'm on my phone either. She's always telling me to put it away. Yeah, I get really distracted with that thing. Yep. Always answering questions, emails, texts. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating when you're a kid trying to talk to your parents and they're on that all the time. Yeah. It can be disappointing. It can be frustrating when that happens. But let's be honest. Have your parents ever been talking to you and you weren't totally listening to them either? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're playing your Legos, you're doing something, and you're in your own little world, and they're saying, hey, Zeke, go, uh, go wash up for dinner, and you're just like, well, I'm just playing. Yeah. Zeke, clean up for dinner. I'm just... Bzz, 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 bzz. Oh, I'm going to punch my brother just for the fun of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Zeke, get your brother and come down. Then they come pull you by the ear, right? Come on down. How come you didn't hear us? Oh, you were talking to me? Hmm, we all get distracted. Well, today we have a story for our sermon that I would like you to listen to pretty closely when we talk about it in the sermon, but I'm going to bring it down to your level today. Jesus was in the village of Bethany, and he had some friends there named Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and Jesus went to their home to visit. Mary had invited him in to make him a meal, and he could stay with them because he was sharing God's word with people, and he needed places to stay. Well, he came into their house and he started to teach Mary and Martha and all of a sudden, Martha got distracted. I don't know if it was her stomach or just that she really wanted to serve her Lord, but she got up and started to cook and clean and get things all set up and get ready. And, you know, Mary is still sitting there listening. It'd be like your sister is sitting there playing with or, or, or listening to mom or dad at their feet and you're doing all the work in the kitchen, getting everything set up. You're doing all the work, and you're still doing all the work, and she's doing none of it. Would you get upset after a while? Yeah. So you run and tell mom, just like Martha went and told Jesus, hey, Lord, Mary's not helping. Tell her to help me. And Jesus said, Mary's doing what is best. She's listening to me and learning from me. Please sit down and learn from me too. What God is teaching us today is that our highest priority, the, the most important thing for us to do is listen to Jesus 
and learn from him. Because when we're filled with his message and with his love, then we can much more easily serve and share that love with other people. All right, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to remember that, w- that you are the most important thing in our lives. Don't let us get so busy with other things that we forget to spend time with you. Amen. All right, give me fives. All right, go back. All right, we continue on with our second reading, Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul prays that God would serve the Colossians through the gospel, rescuing them from the dominion of darkness and empowering them to produce the fruits of good works. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all of God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just it is it as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of His holy people in the kingdom of light. That's one long sentence. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. What a beautiful section of Scripture. This week, take some time to read Colossians. If you didn't get to read it last week in the three-year Bible reading series, take it this week because it's really a great book, um, an encouraging book. Our sermon hymn, Lord, open now my heart to hear.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, there's a proverb that states, the good is the enemy of the best. The good is the enemy of the best. This proverb emphasizes the importance of setting priorities in our lives. And it happens in many of our lives that we just end up jumping from one thing to another to another to get things done as we can, but we fall short of getting everything done. Or we follow the path of the least, of least resistance. Whatever comes across our path, We'll do it and call it good. Neither approach is going to guarantee the best is going to be accomplished. Now, we could all get together and we could have a big meeting and we could talk about priorities and we could try to prioritize and say what we think it should be at the top of the list and we'll probably disagree. But today... Today we're going to learn from Jesus, Mary, and Martha to choose that which is truly the best, which needs to be at the top of everyone's list, that one best thing, the one thing needed. Today let's focus our attention on this brief story and learn about choosing the one needed thing. Our sermon text is Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened uh, her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is our sermon text. This story in the Bible is the first introduction of Mary and Martha. We meet them again a little bit later when their brother Lazarus died and then was raised to life. And then shortly thereafter, Martha opened her home again to Jesus where we have the story of of Mary washing Jesus' feet with a perfume and wiping it with her hair. Though we don't know how it came to be, there was a close bond between the members of this family and, and Jesus. We do know that at least later, They had a strong faith in Jesus and in the resurrection of the dead. And that was already probably true here. And so they stand ready to bring Jesus into their home to give him a place to stay, to take care of him. And so it is that Jesus is traveling through their their village. Mary invites him into her house. She opened up her home to them, as the, the lesson says. And keep in mind that Jesus owned little more than the clothes on his back. And so he was dependent on those around him for for food, for a place to sleep, and all his other physical needs. We read that many of the women would follow Jesus and provide for his needs out of their own pocket. They even followed him all the way to Jerusalem when he was crucified. They were the first to see him at the empty tomb and to see him alive. But even among those women, Mary and Martha seemed to have a special place in their hearts for Jesus and in Jesus' heart for them. And they invited him into their home. 
Well, Jesus is no longer visibly wandering from village to village on this earth. Even if he were, we would probably not have a chance to invite him into our house because his homeland was far from here. But in fact, he is still here on earth and with us everywhere. He wants to be part of our lives, to be in our homes, to be in our very hearts. It is good for us to open up our homes and our hearts to Him. Many Christian homes do this in many different ways, but one of them is at, a, at mealtime. In the opening prayer for meal that begins, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Now, we don't usually have a place setting for Jesus at the table or reserve a spot for him on the couch while we're watching TV. But if you think about it, that would probably be a good thing to constantly remember that your Lord is with you, watching what you're watching, protecting you, guiding you every step of the way. It's good for us to desire his presence, to, to consciously invite Jesus into our homes as we study his holy word, to open our homes to him. When we do that, we need to remember what he wants to do most for us is to get the most out of his presence, to focus on what he has to say to us. And so, it would appear that when Jesus came into this household, he was ready to teach them. Or it may be that Mary and Martha had a question about life or a circumstance, and he began to teach them. In either case, we find Jesus teaching these women with Mary sitting at his feet. Now, it's also important for you to realize that at that time, the religious leaders, the rabbis, they did not consider it proper to teach women the truths of God's Word. It was only the men, but not Jesus. Jesus freely and gladly taught them. And we see Mary pay rapt attention at her Savior's feet. It would appear that Martha might have started out sitting there too. We read that she was distracted by all the preparations that had to be done. So she couldn't let those things wait. She started to cook and do the other preparations because there was a guest there. Now, did you catch in the uh, Old Testament reading when, when Jesus and uh, the, the two angels came, the three visitors came to visit him, he had preparations set up and they, 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 they took a lamb, they, they, they made bread. Just think about how long that took. I mean, you had to gut the thing and you had to skin it and you had to carve it up and you had to cook it. You had to knead the bread, you had to... You know all that, if you've ever had to do that, it takes a long time, okay? It's not microwave time. And Martha, she wants the best for her Lord. So she gets up and she's got to prep. She's got to get this done. We've got to get the meal going. Jesus is still teaching. She hears it going on in the background. She's not paying attention anymore. And then she's getting a little frustrated that her sister is not helping. Well, when she called up Jesus to set Mary straight, it was he who set things straight. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Certainly, the preparation of the meal and the preparations for the house for a guest 
is important. But there's something of greater and higher importance that is happening here. Yes, the only thing that is really needed, namely listening to Jesus teaching His Word. It wasn't Mary who was distracted from something that that needed to be done right then. It was Martha. Martha was distracted from the one thing she really needed. Mary had chosen the one needed thing, and it wasn't going to be taken away from her. She would have the comfort of Jesus the rest of her life. His word comforted her and Martha with the hope of the resurrection at the death of their brother Lazarus. And it would be their own hope at their own death. It would seem that Martha then also sat down and paid attention to the one thing needed. When we think of modern day applications of this story, we immediately think, of those times when wives and mothers stay home from church to fix the meal for the the relatives that are visiting. We should also think of the husbands and fathers that stay home from church to work, to earn a living for their family. Or even further, we we can think of those who show up at church but are distracted as they sit in the pew and their minds are wandering thinking about, oh, I got to get this done for, for lunch. Um, uh, I got this to do in the yard. Um, oh, and I got this leisure activity that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do right away after church. Man, I hope Pastor's sermon is not one of those 30 minute ones because it's a communion Sunday and it's going to keep me from getting home at a proper time. <sighs> or then there's those who leave church on Sunday morning. But never think of God's word again until the next Sunday morning when they come back to church. We all fall into this, don't we? We we are all guilty of this. Believe it or not, sometimes my mind wanders in a sermon too when I'm preaching it. And you didn't think men can multitask. Mm -hmm. But your friends... Here's the point of it all. Our Savior has great and wonderful blessings awaiting for us in His Word. The assurance of our guilt being removed. The comfort of His protecting hands over us. The hope of the resurrection that we, when we face our own death or the death of a loved one, We forfeit these blessings when we don't, or don't fully benefit from them, when we don't place them in a high priority or a high place in our life, in our homes, in our daily schedules, when we don't prioritize listening to God's word. It is truly the one thing that is needed more than anything else that can stay with us and help us. Yes, having that one thing needed involves choosing it. First, like Martha, we invite Jesus into our homes, asking Him to be our guest to influence our lives. And then we put our phones off to the side. We turn the TV off. We maybe hold the hand of our spouse or our child. And we read God's Word without distractions. Putting aside everything else to learn. And the amazing blessings that we receive from our Savior when we do. Because He wants to give us these blessings through His Word. And I guarantee you they will not be taken away from you. Amen. Please rise. 
May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our song of the season, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
we'll gather our gifts of love to our Lord. Please rise. Savior, thy dying love thou gavest me, nor should I aught withhold, dear Lord, from thee. In love my soul would bow, my heart fulfill its vow. Some offering bring thee now, something for thee. All that I am and have, thy gifts are free. In joy and grief through life, dear Lord, for thee. And when thy face I see, my ransom soul shall be through all eternity something for thee. Amen. We included in our prayer this morning, our prayers this morning, Roger Furch, who is going in for surgery uh, this week. And we ask the Lord to guide the surgeon and be with him. Lord of power and grace, whose eyes are on the righteous and whose ears are open to their cry, hear the prayer of your people as we now come in thankfulness for the mercies that you pour down on us anew each day. We thank you for the gifts of your mighty providence. Make us mindful, O Lord, that you have provided us with life, breath, and being, and are the source of our daily bread. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the Savior of the world. Grant that we may believe in him with all our hearts, learning from him the great truths of the kingdom to which he bore faithful witness. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may produce the fruits of righteousness. May he endow us with unwavering faith that we might always be ready to do your will. We pray for the nations of the earth. Subdue terror and tyranny everywhere and call forth leaders who acknowledge that you are Lord over all the earth. Bless our own land. May it ever follow that which is good and turn from all that which is wicked, that our people may prosper in uprightness and integrity. Hear, O Lord, our cry for those who are afflicted. O Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on this servant of yours in his illness. If it is your will, spare Roger's life and restore his strength. You gave your son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servant and bless the medical means employed on his behalf with your healing power. We commit him to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God. Guide and uphold us during our pilgrimage in this world and bring us all to our heavenly home. Receive these petitions in the name of the Prince of Life, Jesus our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to, to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Just as Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
darkness at the cross. So we share in this bread of life, and we drink of His sacrifice as a sign of our bonds of peace. Around the table of the King. The body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, torn for you. Eat and remember the wounds that heal, the death that brings us life. Paid the price to make us one. So we share in this prayer. every stain of sin shed for you. Drink and remember we drain death up that all we enter in to receive the life of God. So we share in this
The blood that cleanses every stain of sin shed for you. Drink and remember, he drained death's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of God. As we share in his suffering, we proclaim Christ will Please rise. Our song of thanksgiving, the song of Simeon, is next. God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. Now receive with a believing heart the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face um, shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. The ensemble will sing our closing song by faith. By faith we see the hand of God In the light of creation's grand design In the lives of those who prove His faithfulness Who walk by faith and not by sight By faith our fathers roamed the earth With the power of His promise in their hearts Of a holy city built by God's own hand A place
place where peace and justice reign. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on Him, our soul's reward. Till the race is finished and the work is done, we'll walk by faith and not by sight. By faith the prophets saw a day When the longed for Messiah would appear With the power to break the chains of sin and death And rise triumphant from the grave By faith this mountain shall be moved, and the power of the gospel shall prevail. For we know we're growing things so possible, for all we call upon his name. We will stand as children of the promise. Thank you, Ensemble, for your gifts and abilities this, this morning. Let's give them a little applause. And you guys, too. You guys are great singers. So it's, you wouldn't believe how nice it is sitting up here listening to all you guys sing. And um, you, you do a good job. All right, so a few quick announcements. Uh, pantry shower uh, for our, our new principal, or new principal, our new teacher. We have an old principal, a new teacher. Um, <laughs> He's going on vacation. Anyway, never mind. I goofed up. I had a f whatever they call it. So there's a box over by the, um, the secretary's office there. Um, uh, you can drop things in there. Uh, we're doing a pantry shower thing. I don't think the box will fit canned goods, uh, but it will fit gift cards and things like that. And remember, he's a single guy. And do you cook? Sort of? Okay. All right. So, yeah. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right, uh, we also are in need of a couple uh, preschool aides, and so if you're interested in helping out in the preschool uh, this next school year, uh, please talk to uh, Brenda Grams back there, and uh, she will get you set up with a job, okay, with a job. We are now going to have what, did I hear you say 80? If we get everybody in that says that they, they uh, want to come, we'll have 80 preschoolers. We are at 90 with the school? Yep. 90 at the school. What a blessing. Many of you guys remember just three, four years ago, we were struggling to keep things going, and what a blessing now. So having said that, um, Right after uh, we get done here, we're going to have a, a quick meeting with the Board of Ed, the council, the elders, and I guess anybody who would like to give a little input, they're welcome to stick around. Um, our building is delayed, shocker of all shockers, and boo, and so we um, are going to have to make some um, 
Well, we're going to have to come back in here for, for, for school, okay? And um, with all the extra students we have, we're not going to have a lot of room to move everything around and put away every week. And so we're going to discuss that afterwards. We're, um, one idea is to have 5th and 6th grade and 7th and 8th grade in here, uh, like we did last time. Um, but a new idea is to have the preschool and the kindergarten in here. And, um, and if we do it that way, then instead of six rooms having to have changes, only three will have to do it if we do it that way. So um, that's kind of the way we're kind of leaning with that. But what does that mean for you as a congregation? What that means is we're going to have to shrink things down a little bit. We're probably going to have between 100 and 125 chairs for a Sunday. And right now it's not going to be a, a, that big of an issue because... Um, you know, we're, we're worshiping under that. But once, if, if it gets delayed into October, then we're going to run into some issues because we're worshiping more like 150 then, okay? So, um, but um, we're going to squish things in and then it'll be a classroom over here and a couple of classrooms over here. They'll get squished and we'll, we're going to have to buy some partitions to make it look a little better and to get, do some sound deadening. Uh, but we want to discuss that, and so if you want any input on that, uh, please stick around for that. It's just we're going to have to do for the next couple months and, and work through these things. And uh, we'll still be able to pull off worship, but it's, it's just what a blessing. What a blessing that we get to share the gospel with so many kids and, uh, and in our community. So, all right. So let's talk about that in a few minutes. Um, keep those in your prayers. Uh, Roger Furch, uh, uh, who's going in for surgery, uh, heart valve replacement uh, this week. Velta, as she still recovers uh, from an infection. Uh, Karen Gerardo, she's back. Yay! Yeah. So, welcome back, Karen. Uh, my family, my mom, and uh, my sister and brother in law are all heading to see my brother this week uh, out in Virginia, and he's going through some pretty serious radiation treatment. So, um, my mom really wants to see him because she's afraid he's not going to make it. So, um, keep them in your prayers as they travel. She's 89 and has a ticker that doesn't work too well either. So we're kind of hoping that everything works out that way too. All right. Um, with that, um, I think all the rest of the announcements you can kind of follow along with and see. All right. Oh, back here, Tim. Yeah, meeting starts at 1030. I should have had a longer sermon. So you have time for for refreshments back here. So I uh, have some refreshments and talk a little bit and then come back in at 10.30. God bless. Mm -hmm.